Hello friends and welcome to my studio. If this is your first time joining me, my name is Taniva. Thank you for being here. So today I have something new for you guys. This is my first video in what I hope to be a series of videos called Three Simple Paints. And I am creating this video series as a way to help people out who might not have an unlimited budget to spend on paints and or certainly not a unlimited amount of space to store paints and things like that. So I was very lucky that I got into fluid art at a time where I did have some extra space and I also had a little extra discretionary money to spend. This has not always been true in my life. You know, I, at one time when I was a full-time skydiver, I lived in a small travel trailer. So I know just how cramped spaces can be and how much you have to work on minimizing your life to fit into smaller spaces. So that was my idea with this, is I really wanted to create something that was both budget friendly and space friendly. So my personal style of painting tends to be a little more minimalist in nature anyway. I don't tend to use huge color palettes on any one painting and um, I think thought that that could really translate into this series nicely. You do not need a ton of different colors to create gorgeous paintings, and you don't need a ton of expensive paints to do that either. So I uh, wanted to distill that down and create this idea. So the whole premise is, is that each video is going to have at most three colors. So just like with the recipes that are like five ingredient recipes where salt and pepper doesn't count, that's what I'm doing here also. Black and white isn't going to count towards the three color rule. That being said, I plan to do a lot of paint, a lot of videos where there's only one color plus black and white. So, you know, really kind of simplistic, but also going into color theory a little bit deeper so that we can use a few paints to make a wide range of colors and hues and values and all that sort of stuff, which we'll talk about more in depth later. Um, but to start off today, I want to bring us down to the table and let's talk about some different paint, paint brands that I like and that you'll see me using a lot in this series. Okay. Okay, let's talk about paint. So we'll start from kind of the lowest quality, cheapest, and moving upwards. So these are craft paints. You get them in these little two ounce bottles. Um, if these all you, are all you can really get your hands on, you can definitely use them. I don't think they're the best choice for fluid art in general because they tend to have a lower pigment load per ounce and also don't have the binders that higher quality paints have. And what that means is when you try and thin them down, you are going to lose something. Um, you'll lose color concentration and you'll also lose uh, how well the paint holds together. So if you have issues with your paints um, cracking or crazing, things like that, that can often be because they don't have enough binders in them. So while these might be fine for like regular brush canvas painting, I don't think they're the best choice for fluid art, especially um, starting out You because you can have more issues with them, unless it really is all you can get your hands on. Also, I don't think you actually save any money on these. So like this, I might be able to use one part paint to two parts of my pouring medium. And what that means is I'm gonna end up with about three ounces of paint total that I can use for my fluid art from one ounce of this paint. Whereas if I use one of the better quality paints, I'm going to be able to use a lot more pouring medium and thin it out a lot more. And overall, it's still gonna be cheaper per ounce than buying these cheap little uh, craft paints. So let's start, set aside those. 
so next up is I have the Artist Loft Flow Acrylics and then I have Blick Acrylic. Both of these are considered uh, student level paints. So a lot of times you will see these in classrooms because they are a pretty low price, especially for the quantity that you get. But I think that these are a big step up in quality from the cheaper craft paints. Um, the Artist Loft Flow is, has a few, only a few colors. I, I think that's the only drawback to, to this one but their white and black work great for background colors, mixing, all of that sort of stuff. So that's fine. Blick Acrylic has quite a few colors and I, they're a great price point. I think this 16 ounce bottle is like $8.99, something like that. And I think they have maybe 20 colors or so. So both of these are really good options. And then a step up from there is the Artist Loft Level 1 and the Blick Studio Acrylics. Okay, so uh, Artist Loft is Michael's brand. Blick is obviously uh, Blick uh, uh, Art Supplies. So this is both of their store brands. And I think they're both great. They have tons of color options. I think for bang for your buck, these are both great options. You're going to have a higher pigment load than any of these, and you're going to have more binders. So it's going to be a higher quality paint. And these are still very, very affordable. Um, I want to say, I want to say this is like $8, maybe less. It might be a little less. Um, but very affordable, easy to get a hold of, easy to find. You can go into the store and get them. You can get them online. Now, one step up from there, and these are kind of what I would call the, all of these are what I would call the um, budget friendly paints. So these are going to be the, I think, kind of the highest end of the budget friendly paints. So you have the Liquitex Basics, Amsterdam Standard Series, and then this is Soho Urban Artist Acrylic. <clears throat> All three of these, again, are going to be another step up as far as pigment load and how many binders and things that they have in them, or the quality of binders. Um, so with all of these, I can mix about one part paint to maybe five parts of my pouring medium. They really stretch far, very good quality. Um, the colors stay crisp and nice. I, I think they're great. So I have different ones of these for different colors. Some colors I can't find in other brands like this mineral blue I just love and I haven't found it in anything except the Soho blue. You know, um, so yeah, and I think it's important to stay in your budget, obviously, but also get the best quality you can in your budget, okay? Um, I like this Artist Loft Silver. This is one I use a lot because it's a very, very pale silver, and I like that. So when I'm tinting something, I can, um, if I'm tinting a dark color with a little bit of this, it'll lighten it quite a bit, but also give it a luster and sparkle. So. This is a color I use a lot. Um, you know, this uh, <clears throat> Amsterdam, this isn't it, but they have a couple of colors, like their greenish blue, that are just superb, and you can't get them in other brands. So yeah, get what you can, um, get what you can get a hold of, get what's in your budget, but get the best quality you can in your budget, okay? Okay. So the first color combo I'm going to do for this series is Prussian Blue from Arteza. I have Artist Loft Soft Body Black and Artist Loft Silver. And you can see the thickness that I have them mixed here, fairly thick. I'm gonna be doing a ring pour. And then I also have some drips that I've saved from doing other paintings and I've strained that 
and just brought it up to the right consistency. Now, all of these have been mixed with my uh, me uh, pouring medium that I generally use. If you go back at my videos, uh, there is a video for it and I will link that in the description below. Now, I wanna say this isn't the cheapest pouring medium, but it gives fabulous, fabulous results. Um, and one of the things I like about it is it dries with a really lovely sheen so that it doesn't have to be varnished or have any other uh, top coat put on it. It is beautiful just as it is. So I will go over some more cost-effective pouring mediums in the future, but for now, I'm just sticking with what I usually use, okay? Now, I do reuse my gloves. If you take them off carefully, you can reuse them. I just let them dry. And I also reuse my cups for this sort of thing. I, After I'm finished with a cup, I leave it upside down over a grate to drain so it dries. And these are perfectly great for things like ring pours and straight pours and things like that. Okay. So... I'm gonna start with a puddle in the middle. Okay. So I'm gonna start with just a little bit of silver on the bottom. My blue. Black, silver, and I'm just going to keep that same rotation going. Pretty straightforward ring pour here. When I do a ring pour or straight pour, I a lot of times just like to kind of give a little circle here, let things start slowly opening up. Bring it back to center each time. Let it open up slowly. Take it off this corner first. There we go. Bring it back to center. Take it down to this corner. Right off the edge. Okay. Bring it back to center. this edge. Bring it back to center. And then bring it off that last corner down there. back 
to center. Hmm. And I do want to bring a little bit more paint off of this. And I'm really wanting to open up more of what's going on over here and over here. So I think I'm going to bring it down this way a little bit. And I also don't like the center to be center centered. Ooh, yeah, I like how that's opening up. I think I'm gonna take a little more off this side. Okay, now that I have a lot of the excess paint off, I'm gonna bring it back down the other way a little bit. Open that back up. Yeah, okay, I think that's really pretty. Now I will bring you down and show you the wet results after I do the next painting. I've got a couple of little things in here I wanna get rid of that they don't, it doesn't dry chunky. Not sure where those came from. Okay. <clears throat> so I think this is really cool. Even though it's just three colors, I think it's still a very impactful painting. It's got great contrast and um, yeah, I think it's just beautiful. So I think I'm gonna do one more as a straight pour and then I will show you the wet results and stick around because I'll show you the dry results as well. Layered exactly the same way. So this time I'm gonna do a straight pour. So I, when I do a straight pour, I like to start up high and do kind of what they call a dirty pour style where it's gonna mix up a little bit on the canvas and then I'll bring it in so we get more definition. So starting up high. I uh, get some really cool effects that way. I'll bring that in. Then you start getting the really cool fingers. I might like to bring that back and forth a little bit. So I guess technically it's more of a wandering straight pour. Yeah, same colors, poured the same way, but you can already see the differences here. Okay. Again, I'm gonna kinda just slowly stretch that out a little bit before I get, decide too much what I'm gonna keep, what I wanna save, what I wanna let pour off. Now, when you do that up high straight pour, you do get a lot of bubbles. And part of that is what gives you the cool effects that you get. So I'm gonna give it one more. start up here and anchor it off that top left corner nice and slow Bring it back and 
I think I'm actually just gonna bring it to the opposite side and anchor that corner. back I'm really liking this whole thing, but if you know me, I do tend to like to leave some negative space. So I'm tempted to just pour a bunch more off of here and leave this as negative space. Oh, I don't know. Hmm. You know what? I think I'm going to stretch it out very similar to what I did the last one, just so you can see the difference. I'm going to sacrifice the negative space. Okay. Bring that back to center a little bit. I'm gonna let go of some of this because I want to see what's going on up here a little bit more. I find that more intriguing. actually moving pretty slow so I might kind of be have enough of it off so I think I'm just going to bring it back to center and there we go stick around for the uh, dried results here we are with the dry results. I think that these are really pretty. Um, this was the first one that I did. And I'm not sure how much the metallic shine is going to show up. But they are very nice and shimmery. And then this is the second one that I did. So I think that these are just great using two, three colors of paint. And that isn't even going into the possibilities of if I had taken these same colors of paint and done some mixing. So we'll definitely get into that more with future episodes. So why don't you leave me a comment below if you liked this, if there are particular colors you'd love to see. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think.